right there. Just <laughs> Hello, everybody, again. So this is part three. And uh, let's move on to the decision. So a letter dated September 10th, 2008. So uh, decisions. Mr. Forbes, it is the board's decision to offer you the following baseline return to work plan. This is where self-proclaimed nasty man and my own man have a little bit in common. As, as you all know, you know, opinions and assholes, everybody's got them. So, uh, training for fixed operations specialists offered through the Automotive Training Center in Richmond, B.C. Glorified fucking parts person. Training is readily available with almost monthly intakes. The next training session starts on September 15th, 2008. There is also a training start date on October 14th and December 15th. Training is from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday through Friday. This is a 26-week formal training period. It includes a one-week job preparation component and a three-week practicum. I'm sorry, is it just me? Or does this business, this school right here, seem absolutely perfect for WorkSafe BC to stuff their fucking seriously injured workers into? I'm sure if I looked hard enough for someone that's a little bit brighter than me, maybe looks for it, I bet you we can find out that WorkSafe BC has investment shares or actually owns this school. I'm not even joking. Not even joking. And I bet you if I, I'm asking out there, how many more have you been sent to this fucking place? Perfect. 26 week training program. Automotive Training Center in Richmond, BC. Wow. From drywaller, self contractor, making over five to seven thousand dollars a month to a glorified fucking parts person working at Napa making just over minimum wage. For what? Because it falls within their mandate of your earning capacity. So, you know, they're always covering their ass. So, let's just carry on here. Admission requirements, 19 years of age or a high school graduate and an intake review to assess requests are uh, requested English and math skills and potentially completion of the ATC test of language and math comprehension. So they've got some weekly quizzes, some role playing program, a final exam and a passing grade. In addition to the above training, vocational rehabilitation will cover the cost for you to obtain the study guide for general education development or his GED. And the exam fee for you to study for and to write the exam to obtain your high school equivalency during the 26-week formal training period should you choose to pursue this. So, Richmond Auto Center is actually willing to take Laura into their course on the fact that he doesn't have a grade 12 education. Man, the strings that work safe BC can pull are fucking amazing. So, the budget to support the return to work plan. You know what? They've offered him the total cost of the plan is $31,890. So they've offered him uh, 26 weeks of formal training plus the 3% added to the price, a consumer price index. So the course costs $10,345. My hairdressing course costs more than that. Yeah, my hairdressing course was almost a $20,000 program. <coughs> Code E, 12 weeks of job search allowances and 3% added for the consumer index for $4,860. Code G, tuition and books and fixed off for the fixed operations specialist and the cost for the GED, $8,285. <coughs> so actually, sorry, I mistake there. So I think the the 10,000 and summer's living things or expenses and then his room and board <clears throat> now this is in Richmond I know some of my viewers live in Richmond and my sister lives down in the area in the in the tri you know the city area there and now room and board code F at $1200 a month for six months $1200 a month what the fuck can $1200 get you a month in Richmond let alone your room and board and your transportation finding your way around twelve hundred dollars you can't live in Richmond for twelve hundred dollars a fucking month it's possible 
It's impossible. So uh, code uh, K is nine return flights to Port Hardy and uh, some taxi vouchers that comes to nine hundred bucks. So he's allowed to come home. One, two, three. Like every other weekend during the course of the program. And unforeseen expenditures, um, 300 bucks, and the cost of the total plan is uh, $31,890. No vocational rehabilitation benefits uh, or money will make it back to my house. All of that is just living expenses for Lauren to take care of his program while he's in, in uh, Richmond. Six months in Richmond. Okay, we all know and they all know how well it went when he spent two months in Richmond at their fucking Orion Pain Center. So let's just get on to, to the rest of the decision, shall we? Um, as explained earlier in this letter, you may opt to pursue the above training plan as is. However, consideration will also be given to apply the monies to support the above plan towards a return to work plan of your choice upon receipt and approval of your proposal. So even if you were to go out and do all of that is required to, to present a proposal and there is a shitload that is required from everything from employment demographically to so on and so forth like that, right? So there's there's a lot. So now we go on to the reasons. The above training will provide you with a new skill set to become re-employed in an occupation that meets your compensable functional limitations and will allow you to fully restore your pre-injury earning capacity in the long run. Bullshit! Excuse me, I had something stuck in my throat there. Jobs are readily available throughout the province of BC. Jobs are currently available in Campbell River. Jobs become available periodically in the Port Hardy area. Yeah, at Napa. For $9 an hour. And as such, the above plan meets the criteria set out in Section 16.1 of the Act and RSCM Volume 2 Policy Item C11-18.00 C11-1787 C11-88 C11-88.30 and C11-88.501. Additionally, the above plan is offered to you as per... RSCM Volume 2 Policy Item C1188.152 for consideration of deferral of funds towards your preferred return to work goal. <sighs> Mr. Forbes, noting that you have opted to relocate to Port Hardy and therefore now reside in an area where there are fewer jobs available as compared to other areas of the province, including Campbell River and area, vocational rehabilitation services may give consideration to funding the cost of relocating your personal household effects upon receipt of confirmation that you have accepted a suitable job that requires you to relocate. Currently, vocational rehabilitation plan or benefits for planning purposes have been approved to and up to including September 21st. This will give you significant time to determine whether or not you wish to prefer formal training or fi for fixed operations specialists or to develop a proposal of your preferred plan. Noting that there is now an approved return to work plan on file, further benefits for planning for purposes will not be provided to you beyond above the date. As you know, Mr. Forbes, all communication must be done in writing and vented through Mr. Sudu in corporate security. Should you have any questions or concerns in regards to the above, please convey these questions in writing to Mr. Sudu. So, if you wish to participate in the return to work plan for fixed operations services, please acknowledge in writing that you understand the details and purpose of the vocational rehabilitation plan that it is your responsibility to actually participate in the plan and your role in making the return to work plan a success. Hmm. Okay, so of course, if you decree the decision, you have the right to request a review, yada, 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 same bullshit. So there you have it, folks. My husband, uh, doing drywall for, you know, 15 plus years. Uh, you know, making well in excess of this stupid $35,000 has been offered, oper, uh, has been offered a fixed operations specialist or better known as glorified fucking parts person for minimum wage which uh, without consideration without cons all concerned parties personal preferences and choices taken into consideration but as they said in their own mandate and policy, they don't have to.